doesn't look like we're getting much farther than this ticket checkpoint area. Not sure where that is, but nonetheless, we're going to persist, see how far we can get up. Uh, and after that, after we bring you some of that, we're going to head back to our uh, stakeout location up on the lodge overlooking Mount Rushmore to get, hopefully, some uh, action with the flyovers. We've heard there are some awesome flyovers, as I mentioned previously. Uh, there's one protester, just one of them. Sad little thing. Um, get some of you that flyover action and then continue to tell you some history of Mount Rushmore, some more information about the event, why it's so special, why it's happening, and then, of course, leading up to the president's remarks uh, at 8 p.m. local time in just under four hours from now. I don't think we're going to be able to get past this checkpoint as this is where tickets are now required, um, and there is a line to get in. They're turning people around who don't have tickets. So this little adventure to find protesters might be short-lived, but, of course, we'll let you know all the latest. We're going to talk to these police officers up here, talk to security, see if we can get in to show the protesters. Uh, so we're going to turn, we're going to take a quick pause for that, and we will be uh, right back. So we promised action, we promised protesters, and that is what you are getting right now. Just behind us, you can see these three white vans that have parked and blocked the road. We thought these were security preventing traffic from going on, but these are actually protesters blocking the entrance to the event. Whoa! And that was an explosive. Not sure what the hell that was, but, um... They blew the tire out. No the way. Tire. Oh, they blew the tire out. Gage, don't get, don't, get, don't get too much closer. They are blowing the tires out of these vans, so they physically cannot be moved. Uh, we're going to try and keep our distance, make sure we're safe. Don't want to get injured at this event. Um, but yes, this is what's going on right now. Uh, this is... Three vans of protesters blocking, physically blocking and barring the entrance to this event. Mount Rushmore is just about a mile up the road from where we are now. These protesters have brought physical vans. They are blowing out the tires so they physically cannot be moved from this location, blocking entrance to the park and to the event. There is a large crowd amassing behind the protesters as well. Uh, they are going to, appears they're making this, making their way up here to physically block this event. This is just happening. This is happening live as you're seeing it right now. Uh, we're maintaining our distance to make sure we can be safe, make sure our crew is safe, make sure our equipment is safe. And so we appreciate you uh, hanging on with us. Uh, but yes, this is live unfolding right before our eyes. These vans literally just pulled up here as we did. Uh, the situation is developing and we will continue to bring you coverage of this as it happens. Law enforcement is showing up in force to make sure these protesters can get moved. But there are larger and larger numbers of these protesters showing up in addition to these vans. So the situation, uh, not sure what's happening, but we're going to do everything we can to make sure we're safe, our crew is safe, um, and we don't want to impede law enforcement's job as well. Can you back, can you back right there? Turn around. Liz, work over here. Turn around and go there. These protesters are now jacking up the vans and physically removing the tires jump, jump, jump. as roadblocks. Goodness. We're the only media here on the scene. We're covering this, bringing this to you live here. We are in Keystone, South Dakota, between the town of Keystone and Mount Rushmore, where indigenous protesters have brought three vans into the event. They're now jacking up the vans and physically removing the tires to create a barrier to prevent any cars from going into the event. Law enforcement has not physically engaged with the protesters, um, but they are moving quickly uh, to try and they are now on megaphones trying they want to negotiate stuff. If our cameraman wants to come back over to the left here, but they're now making demands to law enforcement. There has not been a physical altercation yet, but this could spiral out of control very quickly. This is happening, I know. They're jacking up these vans, taking the wheels off, creating, oh my gosh, creating physical barriers in the road in an attempt to block this event. We're the first and only media here. This is unfolding live on camera. As you're watching it, there is no delay. This is what, ha what is happening right now at 4.15 local time, mountain time, here in Keystone, South Dakota. These protesters have begun to block the road here into Mount Rushmore. Stay with Right Side Broadcasting as we continue to bring you live coverage from Keystone.
of them are screaming that any day is a good day to die, and I quote. So a little bit scary here. These are three vans that we can see that are lined horizontally, completely blocking every lane leading up towards the entrance of Mount Rushmore. There is traffic, a lot of sheriff's truck, cars and trucks that are blocking the highway as well. They came up here pretty fast, I'd say with about five to ten minutes of these tires being popped, the explosion sounds going off. Um, the a lot more sheriffs did come. They, of course, formed this barricade that you're able to see right now. Again, very touchy subject for the Native Americans and the tribes who lived here. They are very upset of President Trump's arrival today. and. Some of the signs also go back to BLM. We'll try and read some of them. Unity rising, great men honor their word, honor their treaties. There's a lot of discussion about the treaties being broken, and that's a lot of what these signs are here today. Again, we are just trying to stay safe and be as uncontroversial as possible right now because the safety of our crew is of the utmost importance, and it is very tense. Literally anything could happen at any second, so it's just important to keep your head on a swivel and make sure you have an exit point. Um, I got the keys to the car for my crew, so if you see me running, it means I want everyone to follow me and get out of here. Right now there's no screaming or yelling. Say, things do have seemed to calm down. It looks like on the opposite side of this barricade of protesters, there's another line of sheriffs forming a shield separating the tourist from being able to go up the mountain. There are upside down American flags. There was an upside down Trump flag earlier. And a lot of people here just want to celebrate America, go up to the mountain, see the fireworks go off. And they are unable to do so at this current moment. Looks like Sheriff's Department is being somewhat gentle, some people were actually upset and getting offended that as um, really just tourists who have tickets to this event, they are unable to go. And the sheriffs are saying, back up or we will detain you. We will arrest you if you cross this white line that's right in front of me. So to them, it didn't seem fair that the protesters can come and disturb everyone, get in the middle of the highway, block everyone from going to the event. But press and tourists are being threatened to be arrested. So for those of you who think that cops don't protect protesters, these are doing a good job of really protecting both sides, really keeping all media in their place today as well. There's a line. It goes all the way down the mountain right now. You can see it. Um, there's an ambulance here just in case anybody needs it. And I'm not really sure how long we'll be here. We're seeing to see how things escalate and to see what's going on. Jordan, did you get any new information? You've been gone for a minute. And you just came back. All right, again, be careful. It said some of the signs read no pride in genocide and America spelled A-M-E-R-I-K-K-A. -K Again, we're Right Side Broadcasting Network, and we were originally here to celebrate the 4th of July, but we are a news network, and this is not what we were expecting to see as we came up the mountain. We were the first ones on the scene, actually. We pulled up. We were talking to a sheriff. As these three white vans came very fast, we heard loud explosions, and it's at that point that we realized these were not law enforcement cars. We thought that they were blocking... Um, the road so people couldn't park here. This were protesters. Again, loud explosions went off. They were actually, as soon as they secured these spots, they popped all their tires, removed wheels. Um, really, it's down to just the rims that are on a lot of these cars so that no one can even drive these vans. It would take time just to put the tires back on. So this is really thought out and a well-calculated protest. We are no longer able to get to where we'd like to go. We were hoping to be able to show you the amphitheater, um, the outside amphitheater, show you the crowds getting in. This is definitely going to cause some slight delays for those who are scheduled to, for the lucky ones who have their tickets, so definitely an interesting thing. I'm running back down to send a tweet. Jordan has to tweet, so y'all got me. If you have any questions, I'm going to hop into the YouTube super chat right now. Literally and answer any questions you may have. 25,000 people. Tyler Davis. Okay, again, my name is Liz Willis. 
I am a reporter for Right Side Broadcast Network. We were here today to show you the fireworks, President Trump's speech, and all the people here to celebrate. We did expect to see some protests. We were not expecting to see this type of protest where they use scare tactics with their tires being blown off right in front of our car, um, and they are blocking the road. Sheriffs are keeping everyone distant from the protesters. One did say, and I quote, any day is a good day to die. He is um, a shirtless one with khaki pants, holding a stick and carrying about a three to four foot um, baton, wooden baton. So not someone that I would recommend messing with. We are keeping our distance here today. We'd love to get you some closer footage, but after some of the things we've heard shouted, I think it's best that we stay back. Again, these are protesters protesting the fact that the United States stole land from their ancestors and that President Trump is coming today. It, it goes it goes back a really long time. There's signs. It's a little bit about everything. This one has to do with rape, murder, genocide. A lot of people are upset of the four faces of the white presidents on Mount Rushmore. They're upset in general about President Trump's um, arrival here today. So they're upset about a lot of reasons and they're very angry. You can hear that through some of the shouting and yelling we've had today. Of course, this is illegal. Cops have asked them repeatedly to move their vehicles out of the road. You cannot do this. It sounds they're playing police sirens. Um, so we'll see what's going on, get some opinions from a couple different people here today. But not, not constant. I'm also going to run out of power. So. But right now what you're seeing, of course, is the Native Americans or those protesting with the Native Americans and some news people getting photos as well as the line of sheriffs blocking, kind of using their bodies as a shield to separate the protesters from the other groups of people, including press and tourists. If you have questions, please tag me. I'm at Liz Willis. I'd love to answer them and tell you everything I can right now. Do not want to bother the sheriffs because they are under a lot of pressure to try and mitigate this situation, keep as many people calm as possible. A lot of the families, um, fathers are really upset that they cannot go past this spot despite really doing nothing wrong yeah. they've been the cops have threatened to detain some of the tourists who want to keep walking up the hill but they do not want anyone to get closer to the protesters in fear of somewhat of a uh, controversy controversy getting started so right now they're really just trying to mitigate the situation we do not know if they're going to be able to move these cars or not again we are just here to show you what's going on this is Keystone, South Dakota for the Mount Rushmore Memorial Day Parade or fireworks. I will mute it for a little bit so you guys can just get a visual of what's going on and see if we can learn some more about what's going on here today and we'll be back. Thank you. If you're just joining us, uh, we are looking live uh, here in Keystone, South Dakota, outside of Mount Rushmore. President Trump is holding an event tonight. Uh, with a fireworks celebration, 8,500 people are expected to uh, be in attendance tonight. Protesters, most of them Native American protesters, are now and have been for the last 15 minutes uh, blocking the entrance to the event. They pulled up very rapidly. Our crew was right behind them in line uh, to enter. They pulled up very rapidly uh, and blocked the road with three white vans, and they uh, then proceeded to uh, basically slash the tires of those vans so that the, the vans could not be moved uh, out of the way by protest or by the uh, police. So the police right now are uh, faced with a difficult decision. Uh, these folks, as you can see, don't look too happy. They have lots of people waiting to get into the event tonight, but they are not able to, and the police are trying to figure out a course of action right now. Uh, the president is supposed to speak around 10, 10 p.m. Eastern time. 
uh, preceding a fireworks show here at Mount Rushmore, the first fireworks show in 10 years here at Mount Rushmore. Our crew is live on scene and have been for the last two hours. We'll continue to follow this story as it uh, is developing. Um, we're going to go back live to Liz and Jordan uh, here at Mount Rushmore in just a second. Uh, if you can get them miles on the line and tell them that we're ready for them now. Uh, <clears throat> we continue to watch uh, the scene unfold here. We do have a couple of cameras set up around. Miles, if you can go to that split right now. We do have a Mount Rushmore, cam Mount Rushmore cam ready for the flyovers that are supposed to happen tonight. We have flyovers and fireworks supposed to happen tonight, and, uh, as well as the uh, speech from President Trump. You can see that all here on this stream, so don't go anywhere. We are going to stay with the protesters. Uh, hopefully we can get this cleared up so some folks can get in. We'll be back soon. Uh, I'll be back in the studio to update you as we get more information, but now let's go back to uh, Liz and Jordan. as well and I'm the National Committee Woman of Young Republicans oh, in Oregon. Do you know Oregon. Zoe Metzler She's on Felt as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm pretty new today too. That's so cool. One minute and we should be live. But yeah, we can talk about all of it. You look beautiful. Thank you, you too. <laughs> Trying. Yes. Hot here. I was just at the Trump um, Students for Trump event in, in Arizona. Oh, I didn't like, know last that. Week. so good. Okay, let me know, headquarters, if you can hear me, and we will, Joe, if you'll just shoot me a text. Okay, so yeah, I've got a couple interviews here today, um, just about what's going on really quickly, and we will actually stand with this in the background, seems more fitting, hopefully safely. Uh, Gage, do you mind stepping that way? So again, my name is Liz Willis Jordan, will you just keep an eye on my back? Watch my face. Thanks so much, Liz. We're back we here on the ground in Bobby. Keystone, South Dakota. Behind me is where the protesters have assembled. If you're just joining us, welcome to Right Side Broadcasting Network. Again, we're in Keystone, South Dakota. It is 445 local time, 645 on the East Coast. And what you're seeing behind me is a few hundred protesters who have gathered blocking the entrance to Mount Rushmore, which is just a couple miles up the road. They brought these three white vans in that you see behind me, jacked them up, removed the tires, slashed some of the tires, and have created a physical barrier on this road blocking the entrance to the park. Law enforcement, as you can see behind me, has created a line as well, although there have not been any altercations between law enforcement and the protesters themselves. A few moments ago, law enforcement announced over a loudspeaker that this is an unlawful assembly, and those who remain here will be arrested, although we have not seen any arrests thus far. The president is scheduled to land on the ground here in just a couple hours from now. He is wheels up from Joint Base Andrews uh, momentarily if he is not already. Already, I haven't. Cell service is pretty shoddy out here, so I haven't had a chance to check those updates. But again, these pe protesters mostly peaceful. There have not been any violence thus far, although they are blocking the entrance to the park. The situation, it appears as though law enforcement is trying to figure out what's going on, how they can change this and reopen up the park, but we have not seen any movement or any action as of yet. We expect to see some developments in the moments to come as they figure out how they can get these vans out of here, how they can. Um, non-violently disassemble these protesters, although I have a feeling it won't end very peacefully. Uh, they are 
wearing face masks, they're wearing gloves, they have signs, they have goggles, they're playing music, doing chants occasionally. So the situation is continuing to unfold here in Keystone, South Dakota, just a few miles from Mount Rushmore, where the president is set to address supporters there ahead of a fireworks display that will take place later this evening. Again, if you're just joining us, we are in Keystone, South Dakota, just a little over a mile from Mount Rushmore. It is Rushmore, a rich community that has people who will volunteer on a regular vans. basis. No one can get through traffic. But even and those volunteers, whether there's 10 or 100 of them, the ticket checkpoint is, although that has now been entirely they need overrun. To say, here's the problem. With, Let's uh, get with to these it. these protesters. Again, so, uh, if you can see to my right, that is actually the town of Keystone, South Dakota. We are just maybe a half a mile up from the downtown area where we are staying and where we are broadcasting earlier. And then you see up this road towards the entrance of Mount Rushmore is where these protesters have assembled. Again, if you're just joining us, the situation is continuing to unfold as these protesters physically block the entrance to Mount Rushmore. Again, keep it right here with Riot Side. We are staying on the ground, providing continuing live coverage of these protesters, of these events, in anticipation of the president's remarks. We've not heard any updates yet on how this will uh, change, if these protesters will be disbanded. But as soon as we hear anything, we'll be sure to let you know. But again, for right now, keep it right here with Right Side Broadcasting Network. Again, if you're just joining us, we're back here at the Right Side Studio, Auburn, Alabama. We have two reporters on the scene there uh, in Keystone, South Dakota, just outside Mount Rushmore, where President Trump's event is supposed to happen. He is supposed to speak at 1010 Eastern time tonight, uh, which would pre precede a, the fireworks show there at Mount Rushmore. And uh, three vans pulled up. We were right behind them in line. Our crew was right behind them in line, the entrance to uh, the park. And they just really quickly... Uh, basically just uh, blocked the, the road and slashed all the tires so that the, uh, the trucks could not be moved easily. Then they jumped on top of them, and they're creating an entire scene here as folks are trying to get in, but they cannot uh, get in, so the police are not letting anyone in right now, and things are a little bit tense, as you can see here. We have Liz Willis, Jordan Parker on the scene there, and we'll continue to stay with this. We do have cameras. Miles, if you could switch again to the two split, we have cameras uh, looking at Mount Rushmore, there are supposed to be flyovers. Uh, maybe the Blue Angels are, uh, are rumored to uh, possibly be making an appearance uh, tonight. And so we have all angles covered for you uh, with the president speaking tonight uh, at 10, 10 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, the fireworks show will be able to show you all of that here. Uh, but for now, let's stay here uh, to the, at the entrance of Mount Rushmore. Let's go back live right now to our correspondents on the scene, Liz Willis and Jordan Parker, uh, as we continue to monitor the situation here at Mount Rushmore. Phoenix, Arizona. What, in your word, is going on here today, right now? Well, this is totally uh, insane, and I think it's un unjustifiable because I don't have a problem. They want to protest, but they could protest on the side of the road. I have no problem at all. They have the right to do so. But blocking the road is totally, absolutely insane. 
and they have no right to do so. This is nothing but bullying, period. End of story. And if the cops are not going to be able to do it, we will. Simple as that, because this has been going on for months now, for weeks. In every city you see, this is it. It's called nothing but bullying, and we're not going to put up with it anymore. What do you think is a good solution for the cops to do? You've seen how these protesters are. They're angry. They're not listening as well. They're not moving. They've been asked to move already. So are, what type of force is going to be necessary for this road to open back up and allow um, these patriots to get to Mount Rushmore to I, celebrate the 4th of July I with their president? I believe the cops should, be, should step on the side and let us handle this thing because their hands are tight. It's as simple as that. It's very simple. Their, their hands are tight. By law, they cannot do much. But we can. So you would be essentially willing to put your life on Absolutely. the line? I, I was in the front line. I served 14 years in the front line as a U.S. Marine, Marine Corps. So I can put up with this. So no problem at all. So if they want to come in, no problem. I got two hands and two feet. I got no weapons, but I can take care of these people. Thank you so much. That was very powerful. And thank you for serving 14 years in the United States Marine Corps. We'll see what happens. Yeah, Keep us I think, updated. I think this is uh, totally, uh, totally absurd. And I think the cops should just step aside. And because once you start touching these people, harassing them, they're going to get liable. So uh, the, the, point, the best thing it is, let us, let us do it. Let us go in there and then take care of this. Because this is going to happen. This, if you don't take care of it right now, this will keep on going and going. And it has happened for weeks on now. Look at what's going on throughout the whole cities. They're throwing out statues. Nobody's saying anything to them. Nothing. Well, realistic, realistically, there's, what, 100 or so protesters. There's one of you. I'm not sure how many people around us would be willing it's, to kind of not f maybe fight, fight, trust, you know, protest. Me. I don't know. Trust me. It will take me less than two hours to go down the street and gather some people. I will have more than double on those people in there. We will take care of these people. Give the power back to the American people is Absolutely. what it sounds like here today. Um, if you look down the street, it looks like the National Guard is making their way up the hill. Keep in mind, this is a steep hill. Um, so it's, that's quite a hike they've got to do alone. But they're here. I was, they are already being welcomed by claps from those who are here to support the 4th of July parade. Up, oh, camera up, camera up, camera up. All right. We have a military plane, chopper, military chopper coming in hot right now. This is uh, earlier than any scheduled flyovers. So not sure if this is related, but hopefully we will be able to figure that out. Another helicopter coming over, overhead as the National Guard is walking up. They did stop, and it looks like they are moving on again. Look at this. All right, you see. Police are coming in in full force right now. They are fully equipped right now. Currently, they are literally marching up to the front lines to take care of this situation. Again, fully outfitted and trying to get a good read as far as weapons go. So I see handguns, batons. It looks like they have actually taken place. They have taken the place of the local sheriff's department and they are pushing forward. Again, they are pushing forward saying move. They are using peaceful force to push the protesters back. People are mad. Looks like there has been the first physical confrontation that we've seen so far. Again, first physical confrontation that we've seen. 5.08 p.m. We'll keep you updated and let you know if anything changes. They are lining themselves in a horizontal line, elbow to elbow, marching forward, saying move. The goal at the end of the day here is to open up this road. This road should not have been blocked. That is illegal. People want to get up the mountain. This has been going on for about a little over an hour now. What do you think, what's going on right now in your own words? This is what happens back home in Hawaii. We're protesting stuff that's a couple hundred years old, but it gets mixed in with what's happening today in America and it ain't, it's the wrong fight.
You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. We're fighting for something 300 years ago. This, it's not the time. Yeah, and Hawaii especially, um, I know there's a lot of heritage when it comes to ancestry. And Kai, like you said, the same thing did happen. So is there a time when you give up and you, you just give up this fight? Or do you think they ever will? People got to educate themselves as natives. But we never had the opportunities before that we have nowadays. So you got to realize that through education that it, this ain't it. Violence and stuff like this around the, you know, against the wrong government is not going to get what we need. Are you scared right now? How do you feel in front of this event? No. There's an Osprey back there. There's special forces in here. Secret Service. I ain't scared. And do you have any thoughts on the event that's taking place right now between uh, the police and the protesters? No, not really. I just here for the show. Right, cool. <laughs> Enjoy the show. We have what? It's not even Americans. That's fascists. That's not even Americans. This, this. We have one woman being detained. Thanks so much, Liz. What you're seeing now is armed mili I don't know if they're military or police. The riot shield said police, armed military in camo, engaging with protesters. One has been arrested. Signs have been stripped from them, and they are now clashing right in front of those white vans. If you're just joining us, I'm Jordan Parker reporting live for Right Side Broadcasting Network from Keystone, South Dakota, just about a mile from Mount Rushmore, where protesters have used three white vans to physically block the entrance. Another person has been arrested. Another person has been arrested. As you can see, uh, we're going to maintain. We're going to maintain um, safety here. We're going to we're going to do our best to ensure our crew is safe, our gear is safe. Um, again, this situation is unfolding right before our eyes. We don't know where this could go, uh, but now the protesters are clashing with police. Uh, and then about 30 to 45 minutes later is when these armed men and women in camo that you see here arrive. So the situation is continuing to unfold before our eyes uh, as they attempt to remove these ahead of the president's arrival. We are on the ground here in Keystone, South Dakota, between downtown Keystone and Mount Rushmore, where these Native American indigenous protesters are protesting uh, what they say um, is stolen land. They have a list of demands they've been yelling out, a variety of signs. Um, and again, they're physically blocking access to the park where ticketed attendees uh, were going. Um, we knew there were going to be protests. There were talks of that that now been for weeks, but we did not expect it to divulge into the situation you were seeing now live on camera right in front of us, uh, staged in front of these white vans. They did announce a few moments ago that the protesters could return to their peaceful protesting zone just around the corner up there, uh, but that did nothing to move them um, at all. Again, they're moving back now. Just carry out. Okay, the protesters are moving. It appears the protesters are moving away from the vans. We're unsure as to what's going on. Did you see what happened? Like, uh, gas is coming. Gas. What do you think? Okay. What's that? Oh, they have Where's Gage? Uh, people are smoking things out there. Not sure what it is. Okay, Sage. Interesting tactic, but they're using Sage now. Uh, again, we've been told there may be tear gas coming. That's unconfirmed, but as soon as that happens, we'll be sure to let you know. Uh, we were right behind these people in line when all of a sudden three vans came out of nowhere and uh, they blocked the road. Then they got out and slashed the tires uh, so that they could not be moved. Uh, the vehicles could not be moved. This is we've been here for now a little over an hour uh, covering this. And now the police are getting ready to uh, make a move of some sort. And we are continuing to monitor this as we have uh, been alive now for three hours total today and we will be showing you President Trump's speech if you're tuning in for that He is scheduled to speak at 10 10 p.m. Eastern time tonight uh, Live from inside the park there at Mount Rushmore along with the fireworks display We have cameras across the city and are ready to show you all the action But we're going to stay here now with what we have now uh, Now you're looking at the protesters uh, Native American protesters upset, uh, as we've been talking about all week, at this event taking place here at Mount Rushmore. Uh, so far, we've seen uh, little violence, but things have gotten pretty tense. I think the one of the protesters stole a police shield, and so we are uh, uh, currently awaiting uh, the police to make their move. So uh, we're going to go back live in just a few seconds to Liz and Jordan there 
as uh, we look now uh, to um, live video coming out of Mount Rushmore here in uh, the Black Hills of South Dakota. Joe Sills here with you live at rspnetwork.com. Um, appreciate y'all hanging in there with us, staying with us uh, throughout the day. It's been our pleasure uh, to bring you this coverage and just a sad scene right here as police uh, stand around and uh, Patriots try to get inside. We'll see what happens. Uh, stay tuned to our live coverage. Go ahead. Periodically, the wind will go the other direction and then we are in a safe location, but I don't think that that's going to last. I think that eventually we're going to get it pretty bad. Yeah, go ahead. I'm going to hand it back over to Jordan. Thank you so much. Yes, the situation continues. Do we need that? Go out. Give it to me. Oh. Hold on okay. Situation continues to develop here again. Jordan Parker for Right Side Broadcasting Network on the ground here. We have heard rumors gas mass or gas, tear gas might be deployed. The National Guard have all put on gas masks at this point. So if there is tear gas, hopefully it won't come in our faces. Uh, but you see a few protesters now starting to make their way toward the National Guard again. I did confirm it was the National Guard. Jordan Parker for Right Side Broadcasting Network here on the ground. And here they go. National Guard has put their riot shields up. We're unsure of, of what is happening next. But our cameraman uh, is as close to the action as you can physically get right now, as well physically allowed to be. on the ground here at Keystone, South Dakota, as these protesters have blocked the road. If you're just joining us, again, if you're just joining us, uh, you see those three white vans up there sped in here a little, uh, just under an hour ago. We pulled up as it was happening, initially thought it was uh, security, law enforcement, but no, we heard a few loud what appeared to be explosions. They were actually the tires being popped on these vans. Of course, they deflated. Then a few of the other vans, uh, they were jacked. Their uh, suspension was jacked up. The tires were removed from the vans um, and wheels were removed from the vans. So these vans are physically disabled. They are stationary. They cannot be moved. This is not at all what we were expecting to see today. We had heard there would be protesters, but for the large majority of the day, they've remained around that corner peacefully in an area not blocking traffic. But then just about an hour ago, around 3 p.m., is when they moved in. Attendees are not being allowed let in as they physically cannot get in. Again, Right Side Broadcasting Network, Jordan Parker here live on the ground with their riot shields, helmets, gas masks and all next to um, a large amount of deputies, uh, what appears to be sheriff's deputies um, here in Keystone. People get hurt from these. This is not um, something that ends well. We've seen it across the nation in Minneapolis. Buildings got burned, businesses got burned, homes got burned. Across the nation, businesses getting looted, people getting injured, people dying, getting killed at these protests uh, when they go from a peaceful assembly and freedom of speech and divulge into violence. And that is what I am anticipating we are about to see happen right in front of our eyes, just a mile from Mount Rushmore here in Keystone, South Dakota. If you're just joining us, I'm Jordan Parker for Right Side Broadcasting Network. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you all for joining us again we were the first ones on the scene here we will continue to bring you loved updates as long as it is safe for our crew we're not going to risk our uh safety as we still have to go back and cover the president's speech and the fireworks tonight uh, but as long as we are safe we'll continue to bring you um coverage of what is going on again rsb network make sure you're following us on all of our social media platforms at rsb network on instagram and twitter um but yeah the situation i anticipate is about to escalate um any moment now as I mentioned, these vans are going to have to be removed by force, whether it's by tow truck, flatbed, bulldozer, I'm not sure. Uh, but they are disabled, their tires have been slashed and or removed. And so they physically cannot be moved. You also see a few protesters there sitting on the ground. A couple of them spray painting on the pavement, it appears. Uh, and the majority of the protesters are now on the opposite side of the vans. And I think a few cleared out to the peaceful protest area when the National Guard showed up, as I'm sure many of them don't want to get gassed either. Uh, but for the other few who have remained by these vans, um, they continue to sit there, continue to hold their ground, and square off with the National Guard just seen to the right of where our cameraman's position is uh, now. But again, gas masks are on, face shields are on, riot shields are up. If I had to guess, the situation is going to escalate very quickly. And here we go. It appears they're about to move in. National Guard, you're seeing this live as it happens. We are on the ground, Right Side Broadcasting Network in Keystone, South Dakota, 541 local time. 541 local time. 741 on the East Coast. These National Guardsmen are assembling here just about a mile from 
Mount Rushmore, where the president is scheduled to have his remarks broadcast to a 7,500 attendees in just over two hours from now. But for now, the situation's been put on pause. This is what we are watching. These National Guardsmen suit up, put masks on. Uh, and yeah, our cameraman doing an excellent job up on the front lines here. We've been out here for uh, probably over an hour now watching the situation unfold. Sorry, I can't use more descriptive terms, but we are kind of a holding pattern um, as these National Guardsmen get geared up uh, to engage with protesters. They're checking each other's gas masks, ensuring they're sealed so they themselves don't get injured. Um, but yeah, the situation I anticipate is about to escalate um, any moment now. As I mentioned, these vans are going to have to be removed by force, whether it's by tow truck, flatbed, bulldozer, I'm not sure. Uh, but they are disabled, their tires have been slashed and or removed. And so they physically cannot be moved. You also see a few protesters there sitting on the ground. A couple of them spray painting on the pavement, it appears. Uh, and the majority of the protesters are now on the opposite side of the vans. And I think a few cleared out to the peaceful protest area when the National Guard showed up, as I'm sure many of them don't want to get gassed either. Uh, but for the other few who have remained by these vans, um, they continue to sit there, continue to hold their ground, and square off with the National Guard just seen to the right of where our cameraman's position is uh, now. But again, gas masks are on, face shields are on, riot shields are up. If I had to guess, the situation is going to escalate very quickly. Again, the wind is at our backs. The wind is going away from us, which is great because if gas or an irritant or something along those lines is to, And here we go. It appears they are about to move in. National Guard, you're seeing this live as it happens. We are on the ground, right side broadcasting network in Keystone, South Dakota, 541 local time. 541 local time, 741 on the East Coast. These National Guardsmen are assembling here just about a mile from Mount Rushmore, where the president is scheduled to have his remarks broadcast to a 7,500 attendees in just over two hours from now. But for now, the situation's been put on pause. This is what we are watching. These National Guardsmen suit up, put masks on. Uh, and yeah, our cameraman doing an excellent job up on the front lines here, uh, getting you the best shot possible. Again, we have the best shot in media. We are the first ones here, the first ones who have been, the only ones who have been live this entire time, bringing you this coverage. Uh, we're going to be as, stay as close as we can, uh, which ensures our safety, safety of law enforcement. We want to allow them to do their jobs um, as well, without any worries of the media around or other. Um, spectators. Again, there are a handful of Trump supporters here. Uh, they've remained largely peaceful. They did exchange insults and uh, chants a little bit earlier, although they have quieted down, remained peaceful, and not have, have not engaged physically with the protesters, which is good. And it appears here they go. I think, uh, think here the National Guardsman goes to our right. The riot shields are up. They're masked and ready to go. And the situation could uh, spiral out of control very quickly here. Again, right side broadcasting network on the ground here in Keystone, South Dakota. Oh, and we see an armed vehicle, unsure of what it is. Could be National Guard, could be police, could be SWAT on the opposite side of the protesters. On the other side of those white vans, probably 100 yards from where we're currently standing. Uh, but an armed vehicle has shown up on the scene here. We are literally in the middle of the Black Hills in South Dakota. Uh, I've been told it is a three-hour and 25-minute flight to Rapid City, where they, and he will then get on Marine One and the uh, procession of helicopters and make his way here to Mount Rushmore again. So that's about an hour, a little over an hour, until the president is wheels down here in South Dakota. I have a feeling these uh, flatbed drivers, this is not what they anticipated when they came into work today. Don't think they were guessing they were going to be uh, towing protesters' vans. Uh, after police and National Guard clashed with the protesters, two were arrested. A African-American male and a Caucasian female were detained and walked out. I haven't seen anyone else be detained. 
Pierce National Guard may be about ready to move. They got riot, riot shields. They're spreading out along this line right next to where our cameraman is. They are in gas masks. Some of them have batons with them, making sure they're sealed up, ready to go. So I have no further updates for you other than what you are seeing right now on your screen. One vehicle of protesters is leaving. All is quiet here. No shouts, no protests. It is silent. Except for the few spectators meandering around, observing what's going on. National Guard has changed in and out of gas masks a few times. They have their riot shields. It's unclear as to what their next move is, but of course, as soon as we see it, we'll be sure to let you know. And what you are seeing on camera right now is live here in Keystone, South Dakota. You can see they're slowly, they've slowed up, but they're still advancing. And they're getting very close at this point. And there's been, there's been contact. Contact has occurred. You can hear the protesters slamming up against the, the clear plastic shield. What we saw earlier when they, they actually did this earlier, and when they did this, you could see, and you could see right now, they're arresting somebody. So what will happen is they'll make and a person may fall through or be pulled through to be arrested. And I'm assuming that they're picking the, the most violent ones to be pulled through to be arrested. It's kind of a divide and conquer technique that we're seeing here. And it is a slow process because I can't get a read on how many people are behind those vans, but at this rate, it would be pretty slow, but hopefully at some point, it's the safest way to get this done because you, you don't want anybody seriously injured. One at a time like this, probably the least amount of injuries, especially to the law enforcement that has to perform this task. And you can see definitely some scuffling up front as they, as they do this. They're very close to the vehicles right now. They're going to have to get past those vehicles in order to bring the wreckers in to get them out of here. And somebody has climbed up on top of the vehicle. And they are, they are stopped just short of the, the blockade of vans. You'll see coming down the street towards us right now is somebody that they detain. They have the zip tie handcuffs on them and walking them back. At this point, this is Kerry Smith. I'm going to sign it off. We are awaiting a little bit better audio. Our reporters are inside the car for their own safety as our cameraman is now closer to the action there. So with our wireless microphone, uh, well, the range, uh, for sure. we're, we're trying to work that out right now as we speak. Oh, uh, I think we got them back now. Stand by. Okay, uh, we're back here at the uh, studio. We're working on getting Jordan Parker back, who's been uh, doing such a great job there for us on the scene, along with Liz Willis. We're looking now at the... Uh, uh, police who have uh, pushed back the protesters now uh, and uh, so far it has remained peaceful no tear gas or anything like that has been deployed we're working on getting Jordan back online he should be here just a second we as a reminder RSBN has been here all day we will continue to bring you uh, live coverage all day of this event from Mount Rushmore the protesters rushed in and uh, right in front of our uh, vehicle as we were trying to uh, get through security and blocked off the entire uh, road uh, leading into the uh, Mount Rushmore where the event tonight will take place. President Trump scheduled to speak at 10 10 p.m. Eastern time. And so now we're going to go back live to Jordan. I think we've got audio. Tell me if you can't hear me. We're back here in Keystone, South Dakota, live on the ground. Jordan Parker for Right Side Broadcasting Network. We just did a quick battery swap uh, to make sure that our mic can continue uh, can continue to broadcast um, here. 
So we're on the ground here in Keystone, South Dakota, where these protesters are now finally being broken up. The wreckers are moving in. The wreckers are on the way. They have uh, cleared the area where the vans are um, that, again, were disabled. Their tires were either removed or slashed. Um, Awesome job to our cameraman, Gage Fuller, who is in the action up there with the protesters. Uh, the wreckers have arrived to move these vans to reopen up the roads. National Guard police working hand in hand to disband these protesters uh, and reopen the road, reopen reopen the road up to Mount Rushmore. There are some very heated people here, some very emotional, uh, some very um, intense people screaming, shouting. There's some people saging us, it appears, getting a large whiff of sage or something else. Don't really know. Uh, but yes, they're saging the protesters. They're saging the observers, saging the police. And right now, if uh, we can get a shot of it, um, the wreckers are about to clear out these vans. They're lowering the beds. I don't think this is what these uh, tow truck drivers had in mind today when they came to work as this protest continues to unfold, although it, uh, law enforcement and National Guard has now moved in. The wreckers are now um, starting the process of removing these vans so they can open up the roads and allow the rest of the attendees back in. We're used to barricade the, the road. They're releasing the chains, and they are about to hook these these uh, disabled vehicles up. And when I mean disabled, they completely removed the wheels on the back, or one wheel at least, and dropped the entire uh, brake rotor on the pavement. So this thing isn't isn't designed to be able to be moved easily. But they're going to drag this thing right up onto the wrecker. It looks like. And, and then get these out of the way so that the rest of the vehicles that need to come through here can get through here. So as they're dragging this vehicle into the wrecker, you can see the brake rotor is just digging into the pavement. But other than that, it seems like after that contact with the National Guard and getting past these disabled vehicles, uh, they, everybody's calmed down. I'm very glad to see that they didn't have to deploy any kind of chemical CS gas or anything like that because that would have been bad for everybody, including the innocent bystanders. And here they go up. They're dragging the jack. So they left the jack underneath the truck, but they took the bar. So you, so the uh, the sheriff actually initially tried to see if they could jack it up and reattach the wheel, but they took the jack bar with them, so that the protesters did, the ones that removed the wheel, so they couldn't just jack this thing back up and reassemble it. And um, I see National Guard forming lines on both sides with the protesters in the middle, and they're actually. There's quite a bit of distance between them, so just estimating the total numbers, you're probably looking at maybe 100 to 200 at best. So earlier I was worried it was much, much more, which of course would, this thing could go on for many hours. So right now we have some, uh, some sheriffs getting ready to, to remove the protesters. Some of these other protesters who are protesting for different reasons may actually just be escalating this for their own purposes. So he, he pointed out that some of the, the uh, people that were arrested who made contact with the National Guard were not native, which is kind of interesting. It seems like we may have certain people that may be escalating. Jordan Parker on the ground for Right Side Broadcasting Network here in Keystone, South Dakota. Um, as you can see to our uh, see to the right, this van is getting low loaded up onto this wrecker, this flatbed here. The back right tire is gone, so it's just being drug up there as best it can um, while, there, while these uh, few dozen protesters remain face-to-face um, -face with the National Guard, with armed police, sheriff's department, uh, you name it. Law enforcement is here on the ground uh, here in Keystone, South Dakota. Again, this is just about a mile from Mount Rushmore where the president is going to be speaking in less than two hours. Uh, so a very dramatic, chaotic situation here ahead of his arrival. Continuing to bring you updates for Right Side Broadcasting Network. Make sure you're tuned in with all of our social medias at RSB Network on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, sorry, Twitter and Instagram at RSB Network, Right Side Broadcasting Network on Facebook and YouTube. Make sure you're subscribed, following us there for a variety of updates. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Jordan Parker underscore, again at Jordan Parker underscore on Twitter. Uh, Kerry Smith is on Twitter at Smith Radio, S M Y T H Radio. Uh, make sure to follow him for continuing updates as well. Again, we have to continue to stand together. Thank you for giving us a little bit of time today. We can learn from each other, but we have to forgive. 
We have to show compassion. We don't want politicians running our country into the ground either. We don't want people infringing on state rights. We don't want people infringing on constitutional rights. Nope, there's a fight breaking out right in front of me. And somebody got tackled by National Guard. A lot of people are screaming in front of me, but okay, they found the perpetrator. They found the perpetrator and they're arresting her now. Okay, a couple of people disagreeing right here. The uh, National Guard definitely stopped this right in its tracks. They tackled the woman who started this. They, they tackled, they tackled the person who uh, was the perpetrator. A lot of people were pointing their fingers at the person who, who they say uh, started this. So they went ahead and arrest, arrested her immediately. There was another gentleman who looked like they were about to arrest, but they let him go. He, it looked like he was just trying to break the whole thing up. And I see a second person arrested. Okay, so there's a man who uh, we saw earlier supporting Trump. And then a woman who actually earlier we saw uh, supporting the protests, but but actually um, I've been told by some of the Native Americans here that she is not a member of their protests. So so an agitator here and a Trump supporter that we saw earlier. If you saw earlier in our broadcast, there was a gentleman that was running after. Um, somebody who was being who was actually arrested and waving a sign at them that's the person that's being arrested right now but also the um, a, a woman who was uh, with the protest so there's so th who saw it what 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 did you see that girl went up to him yeah. took the sign down ripped it down threw water in his face pushed him and then hit him in the face he never touched her so the gentleman, the Trump supporter with the sign, we, he's the one that you saw on our broadcast earlier, had his sign ripped from him and then water splashed his face. On him and then she pushed him and then she punched him in the face. I watched the whole thing. Okay, so that you heard it from an eyewitness there what happened here. And well, it, I saw the woman get thrown to the ground. He got thrown down to the ground first because they thought that the man instigated with her, but it was the woman. The woman no, the I guy, see that. The guy went up to her. And he had a sign. She didn't like it, so she pulled it down. The other one came in. They shoved him. Then the uh, National Guard took him down. Yeah. And then the girl was still trying to either kick him or continue. And we got upset that they took down a guy who got pushed. So then the military took the girl down as well. Yeah. She okay. Him. He didn't assault her. Okay. She assaulted him. She pushed me first. Oh, you were involved? Yeah. I, she pushed me. And then I kind of just like, I didn't react. And then he kind of stepped in front with the sign. And then uh, one girl ripped the sign down and the other one kind of hit him in like right here. And then he tripped backwards down the, the down the, down. and then the military tackled him. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, I, as soon as I looked over, I saw the woman getting tackled. I didn't even see him in the grass. So yeah. She was trying to gotcha. Sneak. After she hit him, she was trying to sneak out, and then they grabbed her. Okay. So you guys heard it from eyewitnesses that saw it from the beginning. It seems like they, there was, there's definitely some people in this crowd who are trying to instigate violence and escalate things. We have people getting in each other's faces. Now we have a police line, a police line that they're putting up in through the woods here and uh, that is because um, you know we had a little little scuffle here probably some people will be taken in and possibly charged I think that uh, there's some natives that are trying to prove a point and they're very passionate yep. but there's at least 10 of them that are they look like they're hired they're, they have a different objective and two of them got arrested already and there's about four or five of them that when they were moving the vans and when they took out that barricade they wanted to cause a commotion but peacefully the natives moved back but there was about five or six of them that wanted chaos and the natives were no 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 let's back out and they took the vans and now they're not feeling protected so yeah and I'll tell you what that is the sentiment that I've seen and a bunch of other witnesses throughout this protest from the beginning have repeated those same those same observations which is which is very critical um, they already told them they're going to let them go back there. Uh, they're going to let them go back there. Yeah, they, 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 yeah, they're so reasonable with them. Okay, go okay I'm going to go check this out. I'm going to walk around the other side of this vehicle. Yes. Oh, okay. 
us alive? I'm still alive. All right, we're still alive. We, we now have a police line here across the whole road. So. We have people chanting, let him go. Did not see where the uh, the woman went that was arrested, but she she was brought out first for sure. And you heard from the eyewitnesses what's, what, they, what they saw. And um, we have seen that same thing play out here for the past couple of hours. It definitely seems like there's there are some faction of... So we gotta go. Oh, okay, we gotta go now? Yeah, we're taking off. Whoa!